Hello, everyone. And today I'm going to read part two of Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew, Case of the Sneaky Snowman. We're on chapter three, Snowball Fright. In chapters one and two, they visited a fortune teller and the fortune teller gave them four fortunes. And two of them have come true. Nancy got pizza for dinner, which she didn't expect. And her friend George got a special watch. The third, the third prediction was that the snowman would move away, would walk away. And the last prediction was that Nancy's friend Bess would fall during her performance on the ice dance. Chapter three, Snowball Fright. Are we sure this is the right spot? Bess asked. Totally, Nancy said. The three friends stared at the empty spot in the snow, the spot where Sherlock had been standing just yesterday. Maybe he melted, Nancy said. He couldn't have melted, George said. The temperature is still below freezing and all the other snowmen from yesterday are still around. Then what happened to Sherlock, Bess asked. Did he take a walk, just like Deidre said he would? Nancy walked to the spot where Sherlock had stood. She patted the snow on the ground. Someone probably knocked him down, she said. That's all. Then where is Sherlock's scarf, George asked, and his broccoli nose, and my dad's old boots? I don't know, Nancy admitted. She saw a big footprint in the snow. Looking up, she saw a whole trail of footprints leading away from the site. Look, Nancy said. Whoever knocked down Sherlock left footprints. George tilted her head as she studied a print. The soles had a diamond design, just like my dad's old boots, she said. The boots we put on Sherlock. Hmm. Then Sherlock did walk away, Bess gasped. Just like Deidre said he would. Nancy shook her head. She didn't believe for a minute that Deidre was a fortune teller. There had to be a reason why that Sherlock wasn't there. Hey guys, a voice called out. Nancy turned. Their friend Marcy Rubin and Trina Vanderhoof were walking over. Trina's thick furry boots made loud clomping sounds in the snow. Clomp, clomp, clomp. Marcy wore blue rubber boots with a pretty white snowflake design. Guess where we're going, Marcy asked. To the beach, George joked to swim with the polar bears and penguins. Very funny, Trina said with a smirk. We're going to see Madame Chocolata. Oh no, Nancy thought, not them too. Trina and I saw Madame Chocolata yesterday, Marcy said. She told me I would get a bright and shiny surprise. What did that mean? Nancy asked. Ta-da, Marcy sang. She held up her wrist to show a bracelet with glittery pink beads. This was in my mailbox this morning. Isn't it awesome? Totally, Bess must, muttered. Madame Chocolata said I'd get a new basketball, Trina chimed in. And this morning, I found a basketball in my front yard. How cool is that? Way cool, Bess must, muttered again. Who needs a magic eight ball when you have Madame Chocolata, Marcy said. Her hot chocolate is pretty good too, Trina said. Come on, Marcy, let's see what's in the marshmallows today. Maybe I'll get earrings to match my bracelet, Marcy said excitedly. Nancy, Bess, and George were silent as their friends walked towards the playground. I have to go to the ice skating rink now, Bess said in a small voice. To practice, George asked. No, Bess said, to quit. Nancy felt bad for Bess. Skating with Alexi and Svetlana was her dream. Nancy couldn't let Deidre spoil it. Deidre is not a fortune teller, Nancy said with a firm voice, and the Clue crew is going to prove it. How are we going to prove it? Bess asked. By finding out what really happened to Sherlock, that's how, Nancy said with a smile. Another mystery, George cheered. She pumped her fist in the air. Bring it on. Nancy looked at Bess. She didn't seem excited, just worried. Bess, she asked slowly, we're not the Clue crew without you too. Bess giggled at the rhyme. Okay, I'm in, she said. Cool, Nancy said. The Clue crew is on the case. The girls were about to high five when whap, a snowball hit a nearby tree. As it exploded, sticky yellow stuff dripped down the trunk. Ew, Bess said. 
What is that? It looks like egg, Nancy said, scrunching up her nose. I think that snowball had a raw egg inside. Look out, George shouted. Another snowball whizzed over Nancy's head. It burst on the ground, splattering egg all over the snow. The girls ducked as more eggy snowballs flew by fast and furiously. It's an attack, Bess cried. Nancy tried to see through the whirl of snow and eggs. The egg balls seemed to be coming from behind a snow-covered bench. George was about to make her own snowball when, thwack, one exploded on the sleeve of her parka. Gross, George said. She watched as sticky egg yolk dripped down her sleeve. I am never eating scrambled eggs again. The icky snowballs finally stopped. The girls waited until they were sure the coast was clear. Then they walked slowly and carefully to the bench. Nancy peeked behind it. A half empty carton of eggs lay on the ground. Next to the box were letters carved in the snow. It looked like a message, Nancy said. The girls hurried around the bench. Nancy read the message out loud. It said, gotcha, the snowman. Ooh, the snowman's throwing eggs. Chapter four, cold case. A snowman did this, Bess cried. Maybe it was Sherlock. How could Sherlock be so mean, George asked. We gave him a smile. But a broccoli nose, Bess added. No wonder he wants to get even with us. Oh, so now it's my fault, George demanded. You guys, you guys, Nancy said. It might not be a real snowman. Then who is it, George asked. I don't know, Nancy said, but we'll find out. I thought we were going to look for Sherlock, Bess said. The pest who threw those eggs could have knocked down Sherlock too, Nancy explained. So let's start looking for clues. The girls squatted down to study the message. Nancy found some woolly green threads inside the letters. The person who wrote the message must have been wearing something green, Nancy said. She carefully picked up two threads. Then she dropped them into one of the plastic bags she always carried around in case of a case. Bess pointed to the message. Look at the letter S, she said. It's written in a curly way, like a snake. George found footprints leading away from the message. They were smaller than the ones near Sherlock. And instead of a diamond design, they had a starry design on the soles. Nancy and George wanted to look for more clues, but Bess had other plans. She had to practice for her ice show that afternoon. Can we watch? George asked excitedly. I'd love to see Alexei and Svetlana Dubunov skate. And best Marvin, Nancy added quickly. The girls hooked arms and walked through the snow. On the way out of the park, they saw Marcy's little sister, Cassidy. The six-year-old was lying on her back, making snow angels. As she waved her arms up and down, she sang at the top of her lungs. I'm getting a puppy, a cute little puppy. Nancy, Bess, and George stood over Cassidy. Did your parents say you can have a puppy? Nancy asked. No, silly, Cassidy said. Madame Chocolata said I'd get one. Nancy groaned under her, under her breath. Madame Chocolata, Madame Chocolata, Madame Chocolata. Not everyone believes in Madame Chocolata, you know, Nancy said as they kept walking. Oh yeah, George said. She pointed to a long line of kids outside Deidre's tent. They were all chanting, we want Madame Chocolata. We want Madame Chocolata. Nancy stared at the crowd. Then she shrugged her shoulders and said, so they want hot chocolate, big deal. Nancy and George got permission to watch best practice an hour later. Mrs. Marvin drove to the girls to drove the girls to the ice skating rink in her red van. As Mrs. Marvin parked on River Street, Nancy glanced out the window. She saw Toby Leo standing in front of the Toys for the Toys for You store. His nose was pressed against the glass window as he glazed at as he gazed at the new sleds. Maybe Madame Chocolata told him he'd get a new sled, Nancy thought glumly. Inside the ring, rink, Nancy and George sat on the bottom bleacher. They cheered for Bess as she skated out of the ice. She wasn't wearing her costume yet, just a pair of pink sweats. Svetlana and Alexei skated out to meet Bess. They were wearing matching black and silver bodysuits. Still skating, Alexei lifted Svetlana way over his head there they are, Nancy whispered. They are so awesome, George said. Alexei and Svetlana skated over to Bess. Today we practice as if we're in the show, 
Svetlana announced with a Russian accent. Hit music, Alexei called out. The song, Winter Wonderland, blared through the loudspeaker. Svetlana, Bess, and Alexei held hands as they glided across the ice. I can't believe Bess is skating with Svetlana and Alexei Dubunov, George whispered. Nancy turned to George and said, and she hasn't fallen once. Whoa. Nancy turned her head just in time to see Bess sliding across the ice on her bottom. Oh no, Nancy cried. Stop music, stop music, Alexei shouted. Bess slid to a stop, but didn't stand up. She just sat on the ice with her head bowed. Don't worry, Bess, Svetlana said. Even we fall sometimes, Alexei said. He pointed to his knee. See, holes in the tights. Bess forced a little smile. She let Svetlana and Alexei help her to her feet. Mrs. Marvin sat on the bleacher behind Nancy and George. Oh dear, she said. Bess must be a bit nervous. George leaned over to Nancy. Or she's thinking about what Madame Chocolata told her, she whispered. Nancy nodded sadly. The ice show was in three days. If they were going to find out what happened to Sherlock, they would have to find out fast. Okay. That is part two of Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew, Case of the Sneaky Snowman. So we see that Madame Chocolata has been right with even more people and she's becoming very popular. Lots of people want to see her for predictions and they are starting to believe her. Also, someone threw snowballs with egg in them at the Clue Crew and there was a message left by someone saying that they were the snowman, which is pretty strange. And then finally, Bess was practicing skating with Svetlana and Alexei, but she fell, she fell down and she thinks that maybe Madame Chocolata is right. Okay, that's part two of Nancy, of the case of the sneaky snowman. I hope you're liking the story and I'll see you in part three.